now. All right then. Welcome everybody to the Quarantine Zone. The Quarantine Zone is my daily live show here on Instagram and YouTube, where basically, because we're in lockdown, quarantine, whatever you want to call it, um, you might be feeling lonely, anxious, whatever it might be. And being in a wheelchair, obviously, a lot of us are a higher risk, so we have to be extra careful. So that brings on extra extra time indoors, which can allow to, uh, lead to extra loneliness and that. So that's why I'm doing this show. If you guys are coming over from Xander's profile, I, my name's Ben. I'm a quadriplegic personal trainer here in the UK. And basically I help people get fit online via YouTube videos. Um, and yeah, so I'm doing these at the moment and I'm also doing live fitness. So if you uh, wanna get involved with that, head over to my profile. And if you saw my Instagram post today, if you're coming from mine, then you'll know who I've got on today. But I'm gonna let him introduce himself. So over to you, Xander. Hi, um, I'm Xander. I'm a paraplegic uh, of two years, and I'm also a medical student at Bristol University. Awesome. Well, we're gonna get into more about Xander a little bit later, but if you guys got any questions as we're going through, you can get involved with the show just by asking a question, saying hello, getting involved with the chat, leaving your comments too. Uh, we'll be happy to have you here. Um, if it's about what we're talking about at that time, we will answer it then. If not, we will answer it nearer the end. So stick around for that. Uh, but yeah, let's move on to a little bit more about you, Xander. Uh, normally when I talk about talk to people, it's um, they've been quite a few years in Jinji, but seeing as you're so new, your, um, your previous life wasn't that long ago. So do you want to talk about what you were doing before your accident and what you yeah what your goals and ambitions were um yeah so it's like you said uh, it's not been that long time it's not even been two years yet um so before my accident I've, I've always had a dream of being a doctor since i was five years old um i also wanted to be a lot of other things but that was the, that was the main one from the start um so everything that i've done up until my like up until this point in my life um it was to it was to do that. Um, I was born in South Africa, um, and we moved we moved over here when I was two. But I like I've grown up in a very like South African household, so we speak Afrikaans and um, we we play rugby and eat a lot of meat. Yeah, we went, um, we, remember, we went talk too much about the rugby. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, Yes, we we uh, it's it's uh, I've always grown up in a, a slightly different household, but um, I went to school. I live in the Midlands in the UK. Um, I went to school in Stratford upon Avon. Um, I played rugby since I was well since I started school, um, and yeah, so that was that was my main that was always my main sport. Um, I was a prop, and I played for my school my school's first team. And then when school finished, I went to university. I'm a, Brist I'm a Bristol University, and I went to study medicine um, to be a doctor. And yeah, that was that was pretty much my life beforehand. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, um, so what would you say you were type like? What type of like person were you? Because it's always interesting to hear because spinal cord injury changed you quite a lot. Um. It's almost hard to not let it change you. So I'm just interested to see what you were like before and then after we talk about your accident and that, like how it's affected you and how it's changed your mindset and that. So what kind of were you like sort of as a person, would you say, back then? I've always I've always been like a massive extrovert um, and it's got me in a lot of trouble at school um, and <laughs> in general social life. Um, I've always, I think it comes, comes with being, um, it comes with being, sort of just like growing up in a South African household. My mum is incredibly inappropriate. And, uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, I've, I've always, but I've always just said what's on my mind. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've, but I've, like I've always had, I had fun, been a bit of a scatterbrain um, and just generally lived life to the, the fullest. I, I mean, I was, I was outside a lot and just sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm quite loud. I've always been quite loud. Um, and I get in trouble a lot, basically. Those are the main two, <laughs> main two factors. Awesome. Um, so do you want to move into sort of like what happened with the accident itself then? Like uh, what you're doing leading up to it? Yeah. And yeah, what happened? So um, I was, it was towards the end of the first, uh, the first academic year of med school. And uh, I came back home to study and um, I went for a walk with my dog 
uh, in the park, and we were uh, um, we were yeah we were just walking, and I like I said I've, I've, I love the outdoors, and I climbed a tree uh, like this big oak tree in, in our park, um, and I've always climbed it. Like, like me and my me and my best friend when we, when we were young, we always used to climb this tree and we'd have games in this tree. And honestly, like I, I don't know how I wasn't injured earlier in my life, but <laughs> anyway, this time I climbed the tree and I got about five meters up and then came on, on my way back down. I was holding onto a branch, um, but I was wearing, I was wearing sliders, you know, like the, the, um, like sandals, yeah, yeah, just yeah. stupid. Yeah. Anyway, so I was wearing that cause I, I got a bit, I got a bit conf- like over, overconfident in my ability to climb trees. Um, and on my way back down, um, my foot slipped out from underneath me and I swung forward and I just let, let go of the branch and I fell about three meters onto a, onto a protruding root. Um, and just hit the floor, and as soon as I hit the floor, my um, my I just couldn't feel my legs anymore. And at that point, I just knew. Yeah. So that's how it happened. <laughs> so um, I'm always interested to know if people had like any sort of idea of spinal cord injury previous to accident. Because for myself, I was a lifeguard over in Australia, and then moved back. Um, um, cause I was over there training for a swimming career, like quite an active person doing lifeguard on the side. So I had, when I had my accident, I sort of knew the procedure, what would happen if someone had spinal cord injury, you know, to get them okay enough to, for the ambulance to come. Yeah. But I had no idea about like what it really meant. And I was just interested from like your perspective, being somebody who's wanted to train in the medical field, did you have any idea of what the true consequences of spinal cord injury was? I guess I was sort of in a, so we hadn't learned about it in lectures or a class yet, but I had a, I had an idea of what what was happening like as soon as it happened. Um, everyone was talking to me like they were saying like oh, it could be spinal shock. You sh- you should be fine within within a within a month. But then that never happened. But I I kind of knew from the start what would happen like what had happened um, straight away. And I remember I remember saying like like knowing that this would be. Sort of half of my head knowing that this would be permanent, um, and I was—I remember like just screaming to my mum about like saying like I know what's happening, and she's like, "No, it's fine, it's fine." I like no, I was like, "No, but I know I know what's happening." So yeah, I, I guess I kind of did know what had happened, which is doesn't really help. Some people think it helps you in that situation because you can re- rationalize it, but it it just sort of doesn't help at all. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. Um, so what was it like in those early days when you, you know, you're saying that you, you sort of had an idea, but what was it like, you know, over the next couple of days it's that as it started to settle in, sort of what the, like the brevity of actually what had happened? Well, I think in the, the early days, it's, it's always a huge blur. Um, I remember people coming to visit me and then and then, like a few days later, or like a week later, they come visit me again, and I and I'd be like, oh, well, it's nice, like it's nice to see you for the first time. Like I was, there's, there's times where people came and I just do not remember them, like turning up. Um, like you're on constantly on painkillers and drugs from the start, um, and you just like you're just sleeping half of the time. Mm. So the first three first three weeks it was just a bit of a blur and like painful. Like, a lot of I just remember a lot of pain. Um, and that first bit, um, when that was done, uh, Seth, cause you'd have that, if you have that, so the, the, like my Instagram's name is six weeks in bed and that's based on the first, cause when I made this Instagram, it was based on that, when it, that, the news that I got told where you're going to have to lie flat in bed for six weeks. Um, and I thought that'd be the worst of it. So that, anyway, that's, that's where that name came from. But I think that when the, when the pain subsided, um, the the boredom sets in um and i think a lot of people know now the boredom of being confined to a small space for a, for a long period of time but that's like this is that was like lockdown times 50 it's um <laughs> you're staring you're spending every single hour of the day staring at a white roof um and uh and you can't like there's nothing there's very very little you can do in those first in those first 6 weeks um, so once, yes, yeah, so once the pain and I, and I tried to get off pain as soon as I could. It's like, if I was borderline in pain and okay, I, I would, um, I just, I just say I wouldn't take it. So quite quickly, quite quickly, the pain, um, the pain sort of started to subside. Um, but yeah, the boredom kicked in quite quickly when the, when the, when the sleeping stopped. 
Um, so, so what I did was, because I, st- I still hadn't written my first year exams, um, what I decided to do is I, I got in contact with the university um, and my dad scoured through the legal documents and tried to find uh, like a, like some sort of clause that says I can't write exams, but he couldn't find it. So um, he, um, yeah, so we, so we wrote to the university and we asked if we, if I could still write my exams. So as soon as, um, as soon as I was able to, I started studying again. Um, and yeah, and that's when, um, and that's when sort of I started to find purpose again, uh, which was quite nice. But it was uh, it was definitely tough in that first in that first bit. Yeah, for sure. It's um, interesting you said about the purpose there because for me personally, um, I was a professional swimmer before my accident, and when, as soon as I had my accident, the thing I wanted to do was get back in the pool, and my purpose was to get back into training. And like people would, like say, oh, wasn't that a terrible time for you in hospital? I was like, no, that was a great time. You know, I was so focused yeah. on like getting as good as possible that um, yeah. yeah, like. I wasn't too worried about what else was happening around me. I was just like, I just want to get back in the pool and start swimming again. Yeah. And it wasn't until like three years later in, when I quit swimming that um, that's when I lost my purpose and that's when I was like actually uh, not in a good place mentally. So yeah, it's interesting you say yeah. there that um, it's similar experience and it's something that I try and teach on my Instagram, like having a purpose in life and it's super important to uh, your happiness. So yeah. No, definitely. And I, and I, like, I think purpose is important for everybody, no, no matter what you, whether you're, whether you're injured or not. Um, and a lot, a lot of the time, if you don't, if you don't have something that you're working towards or some sort of end goal that you're aiming towards, even if it's a small thing that you just want to achieve, um, like tomorrow or next month or next year, mm. um, if you don't have that, then it's, it's, it can be life can be very difficult. Yeah, definitely. With um, with being in hospital, obviously you're there. It's not just six weeks in bed. You're there for a while afterwards in the rehab side. Do you want to explain to people what goes on for you? Like after your six weeks in bed, you start to get up. Yeah. What does that process look like? Well, when the six weeks was done, because um, it was six weeks of flat bed rest, mm-hmm. I thought I'd get up in my wheelchair and start zooming around. Uh, but no, the, the day, the six weeks in one day. Um, the nurse came in and she told me that they're going to lift my bed by 10 degrees for, the, for the, and that was the entire day um, so it wasn't quite the exciting um, exciting finale that I was expecting it was more of a very gradual so the first day they lifted it by 10 degrees the second day they lifted it by 20 and the third about 30 and that's the reason they do that is because because you've been lying down for so long um, they the, your blood pressure like your, your body gets used to lying flat and your blood pressure starts to, um, your blood pressure can drop when your head gets lifted up. Um, and the issue with that is if your blood pressure drops and you can faint. So that's why they had to gradually get me used to sitting upright again. And then as soon as the, as soon as that week was done, so it was actually seven, I actually spent seven weeks in bed, but as soon as that, that seventh week was done, I was in my wheelchair, but I could only be in my wheelchair for, um, 30 minutes on the first day and then like 40 minutes in the second day so it was all very it's all very slow and it's a huge waiting game yeah uh, it's it's very like it's it's tiresome and it teaches teaches you patience I was not a patient person before my accident <laughs> but uh, that's it's definitely teaches you patience um, and I guess each person's each person's um, journey is different so for me all I lost was the use of my legs um, and other, and obviously all the other stuff that comes with a spinal injury, but for other people, they 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 lose they lose the use of their entire body. Which, um, but for me, getting the the main goal after that, because I I sort of without without accepting that this is it, I would also at some point accept that the, the, for, the, for the time being, that this is it, and the the function that I have in my legs, it's not going to come back unless something happens, some some miracle happens. Um, so then I started working on more and what what I did have left. So that's why I hit the. I was in the gym quite a lot. So there was a there was a gym in the hospital, and I spent quite a long time there. Um, and it was quite important for me to just um, get as strong and as fit as I can um, with what I did with, with the function I did have left. So there was there was some physio to try and regain um, regain what I'd lost, but that quickly that quickly became 
um, just adapting to the life that you have. So learning all the different types of transfers, uh, learning how to get into a car, learning how to get into your wheelchair from a car or from the floor and just all these, all these different little things. Um, and basically just sort of became a tick box, exercise, tick box exercise to see what, what is that, how, how I'm going to be able to adapt to, um, the life out there. Yeah. It's, um, it's this difficult sort of mental game that you have in hospital with yourself because obviously you're in a spawning unit with other people that are going through the same thing and some people have the ability to start gaining stuff back and some people don't and it's like is it because i'm not trying hard enough but like when you sort of don't really understand in the first like little bit it can be quite difficult to like wrap your head around like why am i not improving you know i'm trying to put the effort yeah. in yeah it's a very tricky situation if you don't have the knowledge to but yeah i think it's important to realize that every single spinal injury is super different like <laughs> It's so much variety, so, much variety. so yeah you, but i don't know if you i don't know if you had it when you first had your injury but you always you always get thousands of family members and friends who send you the articles of people who break their back or neck and that, that, that start walking again magically and you're like okay well that's and then you're like this yeah well this the odds are the odds are against me but i'm gonna be the one that's gonna i'm gonna be that one yeah um but then the the truth of the matter is, and the, the the hard fact is, you aren't. A lot of the time, you aren't the one. And the reason the statistics are statistics is because it's the the, the they are to be trusted most of the time. Um, and I think it's when you get past that phase of I guess the the denial phase that this is your life. Um, that's actually when you get to start living again. Yeah. So when you came out of hospital, because we've had a few other people on, and nearly everybody so far has said that. The real learning is when you come out of hospital because you're in this nice, friendly environment that's all set up for wheelchair users and you come out into the real world and you realise that, oh shit, nothing's right. <laughs> yeah. um, so what was that sort of like for you and um, uh, yeah, what, what did you come out to into the real world? Um, the, the, first, the first two days after coming back, after, um, after being discharged, they were tough. Um, I think I know quite a few people go into this, like go into a long like depression, but I think I managed to condense all of that into two days. <laughs> um, I think, but it was, it was just coming back and realizing, and then you get the social workers and you get the, the um, occupational therapists and you get all these people that their job is to look after you and make sure that your life is okay. Um, but it's not something that you feel like as a as a at a twenty as a twenty year old or a nineteen year old because I was nineteen when I had my accident. Uh, it's not really something that you you expect your life to be because I was fully fine, um, fit before my accident, and then I come home and then suddenly, um, yeah, I've got all these social workers, occupational therapists, district nurses. They're all coming to like look after me, and I'm I'm quite a. A quite like a, a stubborn, um, headstrong kind of guy. So I don't, I don't like having all these people that were their job was to help me. I don't want any help. Um, I so I mean, I, I, I've, I've learned quickly that um, I need to like you. You do need to accept help when you need it, but also a lot of, the, but also very quickly I've learned what I needed and what I didn't need, um, and life's quickly returned back to normal. But it was actually only when I start started sports. Um, that that sort of weight got lifted. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, so with um, you saying there about the sports, how did it go from you know coming out of that? Actually, before actually before I go on to that, I want to know about sort of what it was like to come home because you're living with your family still, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what was it like? Because obviously, I assume the house wasn't adapted for you uh, to begin with. But how has that been over the over the last two years to like adapt the house and make sure that it's got what you need there. Um, so the the house, um, yeah. So the house, a house. The entrance um, was fine, and I actually ended up living in the front room because my room was upstairs. Um, but yeah, I lived in the front room, which like, in a hospital bed in the front room, and it had it didn't have a front door. It didn't have. And the amount of times that we would have we would have visitors and they'd walk in and I'd be butt naked in the in the front room. Um, it wasn't. It was no. It wasn't. I had no privacy. Um, but I also was just grateful for the fact because I I was in and out of hospital in a hundred days. That was about 
three four months whereas there's a lot of people who uh who take year a year or longer um so i was just glad to be able to be home but yeah no that that first while it was it was tough but then um about about yeah so, we, so then we got a grant for the government um to do uh, to make adaptations and we ended up uh they wanted to put a lift into the house I don't really want to. I don't really want to come in from the floor into my room because I just felt like that'd be that'd be weird. Um, <laughs> so we ended up taking a grant from the government to um, adapt uh, to, to to build like a, a purpose built um, shed in the garden almost. So I basically live in the shed. I'm I'm like Harry Potter in a wheelchair. <laughs> um, but you can see here. I'm now actually. I'll, sh- I'll give you a little uh, little show. But here you can see. So this is like the kitchen here. Um, and then here's like a little exercise area. My room's a bit of a mess. Um, and and then here you can see there's the house over there. So um, it's all, I don't know if you could, could see any of that. Um, but it's all flat. It's all purpose built. A bit of purpose built. And my, my, my family um, worked really hard on, on designing that for me. And I really, like, I really appreciate that. Um, and... So yeah, so that's how that's how, it, how that's how it, it's become. But for the first three four months, I was living in that front room um, in a hospital bed, and it wasn't the, it wasn't the best. Yeah, it must be quite nice to have your own little space then in your house as well. So it yeah, it's definitely it's definitely nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I when I came out of hospital, I, I lived uh, by myself straight away. Um, mm. I. I I was uh, a bit, a bit of the opposite to you. I didn't have like the, the, the fa- I was off around the world. I was at boarding school when I was younger, and then I yeah. lived in Australia without family. So yeah, I was quite happy to not have to live with my family. <laughs> <laughs> no, my family, my family have been very good support to yeah. me. So I mean, I'd, I yeah, my mum drive, my mum gets on my nerves, no, um, is- definitely. <laughs> but uh, but we you know she's she's been one of them. Like she stuck by my side throughout the entire uh, the entire process. She rented a house in, near the hospital or rented a room near the hospital so that she could be there with me every single day. Mm. Um, and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been able to get through this as quite as easily without her. Um, no, she's really been yeah. a, a great, uh, help, help through all of this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I shouldn't, I shouldn't slag my mom. She did. She's really, she, she was really good during hospital as well. She, oh no, but they can be so annoying. Yeah, they're like exactly what you need and exactly what you don't need at the same time. Exactly, exactly. And I can see, I can see that she's watching this, and I just want to say that I love her. Um. Bless. Um, so yeah, you said there about uh, sports and that, and you moving on to that. We've had a little uh, conversation with some of the other people on, and we've said how important sports is for like coming to terms with it not just in terms of you know getting yourself into something finding a purpose but also surrounding mm. yourselves with people that are going through similar experience to yourselves do you want to explain uh sort of how you got into sports what you're doing and how it's helped you over the years so i mean like i said i was i was always like a i always played rugby um but it was never it's never for me like the, the idea was never i was gonna, gonna i was gonna become a springbok I was always just happy with playing university rugby, um, but and also when I then and then I I so I had a friend, um, Carrie. Um, she was the world rec- well, she was the world record holder at the hundred meters. So I thought uh, for the for wheelchair racing. Um, so I thought it'd be quite a cool, quite a cool idea to just send her a message and see if I can do what she does. So anyway, so I sent her a message and within that week I was on the on the track at Warwick university um going around in a wheelchair like a racing wheelchair and before i turned up i was i was not because you know when you go when you go from um being able-bodied to disabled you sort of you know you don't know what this world's going to be and sort of before you have no you have no clue i didn't know anybody in a wheelchair before my accident and then my accident happened and i was like there's a there's a big hole um there's a big whole idea of what's what's life going to be like. Are people going to look down at me? Um, it's, it's, am I going to be the weird kid? And I was worried, sort of, when I turned up, that it was going to be like a little group of disabled kids, like just like rolling around on the floor. <laughs> um, but it wasn't that, it wasn't that at all. And it was actually like it, it became more of a community of athletes trying to literally trying to be their best um, and. Top level athletes, actually, 
um like it's it wasn't uh it wasn't a pity party people giving people a chance to a chance to do what they like do what they can it's actually giving people a chance like giving people a chance to perform at a great level and we have we have a few paralympians in our squad and that word obviously like it sometimes it can be quite muddled with just like it's like a participation it's a participation medal but it's it's so much more than that and that it's it's just as much work getting going to the Paralympics and support uh, and um, representing your country um, than than it is with the Olympics. Um, you just you have to put in the same amount of work and you've got to be the same level of physical fitness, but you also have to fight that mental battle off off the off the uh, the the track or the pitch or whatever it is that you do. Um, so it's yeah, it's for me. It's um, anyway. So I started racing. Um, I mainly started with sprinting because I was just super unfit and 100 meters seemed a lot easier than a marathon. Um, but yeah, so that, in that first year, I, I th- sort of threw everything into um, my racing and I wanted to make something of it. Um, for me, like I sort of this, this door had opened up where um, I'd found something that I could be, I could be the best at if I if I really like if I really applied myself. So I I did a lot of I did a lot of racing um, and I actually went to South Africa for four months and trained with um, trained with my with my well, now good friend called Brandon who has a rehabilitation center in Cape Town and um, and yeah so I so I trained there and I had a, I had my first competition in South Africa it was the national um, the national um, competition and I won. I won a race. I came second, and I, I got. Four, I ended up with four medals, um, which was pretty cool. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so I think I think it was at, it was at that point that I actually I got a taste for competitive sport. So racing became like a racing became an even bigger part of my life. But the training it was tough. It was a, it was, and I've I've never actually been in such great shape in my life. I'm actually starting to see lines in places that I didn't. I've never seen lines before. Um, and yeah, so sport's been really like, it's been a big part of the rehab pro the rehab process for me. Um, a lot of, I guess I did a lot of rehab. Um, I've done a lot of rehab and the biggest help for me was a sports. So I started, so I did racing and then I studied university and I found it quite difficult to, um, I found it quite difficult to carry on with the racing, uh, mm-hmm. because I was, um, I was just struggling to, I was struggling to get coaching, um, and I was getting to a point where it was, it was getting quite frustrating. So, um, my coach, the coach that I have at Warwick University, is great, and he's a, like he's a very good coach. Um, but obviously, then you move, then you relocate, and it's it's the, the para sport is it's not a it's it's quite it's a it's a it's a big thing. And it's a lot bigger, a lot, a lot bigger of a thing than I thought that I knew of before, but it's still not nationwide. Right. Um, which is unfortunate because actually it's it's a, it's an amazing thing, and actually the way that people adapt to um, yeah, people the way that people adapt to the circumstances that they're faced that they're faced with, um, it's amazing that actually what what their bodies can do and what my body can do still. So anyway, so that, so this year I um, I carried on with gym training, um, and then I saw uh, an advert on. Uh, on Facebook for British rowing and the para rowing division, um, and I thought I very quickly. It's just a classic. Just without thinking, uh, I made a I made a decision to sign up for that uh, without actually knowing uh, without actually knowing what it was. Um, and uh, before I knew it, I was at, uh, at one of the I was at the um, National Sports Centre in in. Um, in near London uh, for a trial for a na- for a national level sport that I've just never I never really thought of. <laughs> um, and I've never, I'd rowed a little bit at school, but I've never done any rowing, and so I got accepted onto the rowing program. Um, so now I'm on the, um, the talent squad for that, and also carrying on with my racing. So there's a lot of things. That, there's a lot of sports basically. Uh, I've been rambling, but uh, it's a lot of sports basically um, that's available out there, and it's. Um, it's amazing, actually, just the, the 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 effect that it has on your mental health and your physical health. Yeah, definitely. Um, just a uh, quick thing, like before we move on, I just want 
do you say if there's anybody out there that's sort of maybe going through something similar to yourself and wanting to get into sport, what advice would you would you give them? Um, oh, as you frozen a little bit on the on his, on the Instagram, but yeah. I'll carry on yeah, talking anyway. Um, I saw that. <laughs> for uh, for me, I. I think it's most because like with, with what I said with it, it's not um, it's not all it's not nationwide currently. Um, it's all about I think it's for me it's getting getting into what is available for you in your area. Um, there's a lot of websites I don't know I, I'm, I assume there are anyway <laughs> of uh, stuff and of things that there are in the area. For me, I was lucky to just stumble across something that I I knew someone I had it, had it in, but. Um, but I definitely would. I definitely would recommend um, if you were a, if you were a, sport, a sporty person before, um, then get it, definitely get into sports and definitely don't hesitate. But then there's also a lot of people that aren't sporty people, and even then, I would say give it a try. Um, and if and you might find that actually you've got a new a new passion for something, but for me, this, yeah, sports has just been the one for me. Whereas for other people, it might not it might not be that. Um, but I definitely would recommend trying it at least once and trying it is a huge variety there's um you have rowing you have racing you have hand cycling you have sled hockey which sounds amazing i've never done it i would really i really want to give it a try it's good fun uh, I, I had to go in australia it was uh it's pretty crazy <laughs> it just it looks it looks amazing yeah. um just <laughs> and uh, swimming all these all these sort of things there's so many different sports and if you do, if you find one i did tennis i love tennis Basketball, I wasn't so good at because I went to, I, I enjoyed it one time, and then I went and I just I made the mistake of taking my taking my friend because it's it's one of those sports where it's a, it's a inclusive, all ability so able bodied as well. Anyway, so I took my friend and um, I was I was ready to like just put the put the moves on him. Anyway, so he he ended up being so much better than me, even though he never pushed a wheelchair before and. Uh, <laughs> And so, yeah. So after the second after the second session, I was already demoralised. But yeah, there's so many different sports, and you can try them all, and they're all really exciting. Um, and hopefully, if yeah, if there's someone in the same same situation, um, just and also just, I feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of people out there who, because I remember that you see uh, people on Instagram and they have so many followers, and it's quite scary to. Uh, message them because you're like ah what if they don't reply or they're too famous for me but I think a lot of people like what I've realized is people in life are just they're just people and they they, they go through the same emotions as you and me and they all they all just I mean unless there's nothing wrong with them they all want to help so if there's if you if you're if you're like in a position where you where you're struggling or if you want to know something just message the people that message the people that you like that know that know this stuff so i'm more than happy to talk to anyone who who wants to know anything about racing or anyone who wants to know about studying in a wheelchair uh, and all these sort of things um so i think it's yeah i think it's just important to actually get connected and also just try just try all the things that um are available yeah definitely um, so let's move on to you saying there about studying um, and talking about you um, carrying on your university. And you were saying as well, like you started to do some stuff in while you're still in hospital as well. Um, yeah. So for you, how, why was it like so important to get started straight away? And um, sort of what were the steps to get back into studying full time again? Sorry, if you give me two seconds, I just need to quickly plug my laptop in. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry about this. No um, yeah, so for me, um, so I had I had this thing where life was uh, I hadn't quite got to the got to the realization that life carries on, um, and for me, I was so scared that uh, at the start I was so scared that if I if I don't um, yeah if I don't carry on with my life as quick as I can, I'm not going to get, get get everything done that I wanted to. So my accident was in May of 2018 and my aim was to get back at university by September 2018, which is five months and it really wasn't feasible. And I was pushing, I was pushing everything to try and um, make sure that that would happen. So that's why, that's why I did my, um, I did my exams. Um, yeah, that's why I did my exams straight away. But, um, 
Yes, that's why I studied then. And uh, but, uh, obviously, I got I I ended up being discharged in September, um, and being dis like, like you said, there's a whole new um, side of adapting to. Um, my laptop wasn't charging anyway. <laughs> um, thanks. Um, my yeah, there's a whole new, there's a whole different bit of adapting. So you get out of hospital and you're like, okay, well, I can do this now. And then and then suddenly you get into the world and you're like, there's actually so much that I don't know how to do. Um, so yeah, so I took the, I took that year out and it actually just ended up teaching me um, ended up teaching me how. Life doesn't life life isn't just a series of like a isn't it just a formula where you um, you start you start you go to school you go to university you get a job you get a wife you get a kids and you die it's it's more it's so much more than that it's for me like this whole thing has taught me that actually like it's okay to take your time um, so actually the opposite of your question you asked me why it was important for me to carry on with it straight away but what actually what I actually learned was it's it's you don't have to everything doesn't have to be happens straight away um and it can actually you can take your time if, it, if it's needed and you can take the time to rest and you can take the time to work on the things that need to be worked on um and it doesn't have to be so formulaic um i've now had the chance to um to do so much to do so much in, the, in that last year the, the year that my gap year that i took off which is unplanned and i spent most of it with my mum. um but the uh, <laughs> That I, I, I got, I learned so much in that year. That I've learned more in that year than I have almost in my in my whole life. Um, and I've seen seen things. So I went to, yeah, I went to Africa for four months, which I hadn't had the chance to do. I, had, I hadn't ever done it. Had the chance to do since I was born there. Um, and I also went to America and I trained with the Paralympic the Paralympic uh, racing team there. Um, and actually, just yeah, so just taking that time off was really good for me. But then the then the then the year then the year finished a lot quicker than I thought it would, um, and it was back to studying. But th for me, it was important to actually get back into studying because, I, like I said, I had I had this dream since I was a kid that I wanted to be a doctor, um, and I had to just carry on with it. Yeah. So do you want to explain about like the up to the point you are now? Because obviously you're back in full time study to become a doctor and. Um... What was it like? Um, obviously, I guess one good thing about being a doctor is that hospitals are fully accessible. <laughs> yeah. so you don't have to worry too much about the workplace in terms of that. But um, yeah. uh, what is there any sort of uh, challenges you have to overcome from being disabled now, or is there anything that you have to change, or is it just normal? <laughs> yeah, it's. I, I think for me, the the biggest issue. So I, I studied at Bristol University, which is. It's it is such a hilly such a hilly city. It's a lovely city. It's beautiful, but it's so hilly. I'm so glad I have my car um, to just get around. Um, and it was, but um, yes, yeah, so that was the main the main challenge for me was not the hills. I can do those, but it's the it's what the hills bring. So I I, I know that I assume that you know the the whole the hardest part. And mom, I was talking to my mom about the about my mom about this yesterday. The hardest part for me was um, about this whole this whole thing. This whole thing is the is the social is the social exclusion almost that is forced upon you um, rather than rather than just because I'm like I said I'm a, I'm a very I'm a extrovert. I like to um, I like to spend time with my friends and I like to just do things with my friends. But there's almost forced this forced exclusion where it's nothing to do with them. It's nothing to do with with me it's just the environment in which we're in so all the houses have steps all the clubs have steps everything has steps and and it's and if i want to do things with my friends you have to swallow your pride um and ask ask them to carry you into the house or do that and it it does it gets it gets tiresome sometimes and it sometimes it, it's it's quite like a it stops you from doing that thing that you wanted to do hmm. um so that for me that's that's the hardest part of it and living by myself i've had to just sort of I just have I've sort, of, sort of had to come to terms with that, and I, it sucks because actually I don't I don't feel like I I should have to come to terms. With it. I feel like it's something that it's not something that we should that should we should just accept. I think it's something that actually that's, that we could work on in the future. I don't know how, and I don't know, how, but but it's it's something that's quite important for me is um, accessibility and the laws. And there's as there's already been so many great laws. And actually, I, I watched Crib Camp the other day on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it. 
um, but it's about like, it was just about like the the start of the re- the revolution for disabled access to places, um, and now sort of what we take for granted already. But there's still so much that it can that can that can improve. Um, I don't know if you if you found the same. Uh, yeah, um, I, I think for myself, I'm extremely laid back. So when you were saying about swallowing the pride and that, I'm more like, yeah, carry me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm still I'm still getting there. <laughs> so, uh, it's like, I feel like the um, I can't remember the guy's name, but the guy in Three Hundred, the like person who thinks he's God, yeah, he's yeah, carried yeah. everywhere. I'm like, <laughs> I just pretend I'm that basically. <laughs> so yeah, for me, I, I sort of just um, like just make a joke out of all of it, really, and I yeah. Uh, um like you say with your friends and that i sort of over the last sort of 10 years because that's how long i've been injured coming well just about to come up 10 years uh just surrounding myself with the right sort of people definitely helps uh people that have the same sort of attitude to it as i do um and most of the people apart from one person is people that i've become friends with after my accident so they've only ever known me as uh as somebody in a wheelchair so that definitely helps you know they don't it's not something they've had to get their head around it's something it's like oh it's just me that's yeah. just what I, that's what i come with so uh that definitely helps um the situation having the right people around me um but yeah um definitely in the early days it's a bit like uh you don't know like when to ask for help you don't know like you have to try and find your voice and that's yeah. something that definitely takes time because you obviously uh, you were a, a fit young guy playing rugby and you know living your life as it was and you know i was a fit young guy swimming all the time and it's like you're not norm you don't normally ask for help all the time no exactly <laughs> you, yeah you sort of do it. <laughs> um and that's um i want to uh, ask a little bit more about like the um, the doctor side of it but um mm. like at the beginning i asked about like the person you were before your accident so going through yeah. all these experience how um, how do you think it's changed you said about um being patient and that but in other ways how do you think it's changed you i think in in all without without coming across as cocky or arrogant this the my accident has made me so much so much of a better person um than than anything um than i've been like than any aspect of my life and i've i've always my i've always like i said i was always in trouble at school um i was always just getting into i've always got myself into weird social social situations but i think in terms of um yeah in terms of in terms of that it's um it's always it's always it's sort of geared me up for this big the big finale almost <laughs> the big thing that could go wrong um so I've always, I've always, yeah, I've always had little minor, minor traumas in my life. I was in A and E quite a lot, just because. Um, but I think, um, yeah, I think, I think actually, just the, I've always been geared up to this. Um, but I think the way, the way that this accident has changed me is, it's made me a lot more, um, like I said, a lot, a lot more patient. But it's also made me a lot more um, accepting of myself and accepting of other people um and it, and also like i don't know like the little the little things don't stress me out anymore um the little things in life where usually i'd i'd get worried but i think everything just sort of sorts itself out um most of the time um i feel like i have this i have this idea that if that life only life's only over when when you're dead like <laughs> As long as as long as you're still living, you still, as long as you still have breath, there is still there is still chance for the situation to be resolved, or the thing that the obstacle is getting in the way for that to be to be um, overcome. But uh, yeah, I think I just, I just I basically just feel like I've now like I've got so much so much wisdom. I feel like a sixty year old in a twenty year old body. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree uh, with you there definitely. I feel the same sort of way. Um, <clears throat> feel like I it. It taught me so much. I, I for sure, before my accident, I was a super selfish person. Um, mm. Being a, trying to be an Olympic swimmer, like you can't, you don't have to, if you're thinking about other people and other things, then you're not going to make it, essentially. You yeah. kind of have to think about yourself. And yeah, that made me a selfish person. And then like the accident, it took me a good sort of five years to sort of come, to, like get to the point where I started to like improve myself mentally. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was, it definitely led me to uh, patience was definitely a huge thing. You know, I was constantly right. just chasing, chasing, chasing something. And then it was like, no, forced to stop and like appreciate yeah. things. And 
yeah, like even when I'm just going for like a walk, um, like just around my local area, I, I'm just appreciating things a lot more. And I was like, I never <laughs> noticed this. <I> like, <laughs> yeah. just, just like sitting around, just looking at things. And it's just like, yeah. it's just gives you a whole new appreciation of life and uh it makes you realize what's actually important um and for me that was just being happy that was the only thing that was yeah, important like definitely. everything else was just second to that so yeah no, definitely. i definitely i can agree with that and i think also just yeah like you said just that appreciation for the little things um that you don't that you don't really you don't really get and your life life goes a little bit slower it has to because mm-hmm. Um, but I think in turn, but it also it's, it is, it is nice to just actually sit back and be a lot more laid back about things. Yeah. I guess I, I think, I think that's a, that's a general, but also in terms of like, you can't, and what it went out with that, you said it takes, took you about five years. And for me, it, I, it came quite quickly, that sort of acceptance, but you, it's not something you can rush. Um, I think it's different for each person and. A lot of people will have family members or friends or whatever that got, they've either gone through the same thing or gone through, gone through something similar, and they'll go through that anger or that that pain or that upset upset from um, a big big traumatic event. Um, but I think yeah, it's just it's something that people need to come to terms with in their own time. Um, and luckily for me, I've had a, I've had a support system in my life where it's been you deal with you deal with the situation and you move on. And then, and then that's it. Um, you don't, we don't like hide from things. We don't, we don't, we just sort of like, there's, there's, like if there's a problem, you fix it and then you move on. And I remember like one time I was in, I got some bad news when I was in hospital. I think, it, I think, um, yeah, I just got some, I just got like a, cause it's when I moved to the new hospital, I got some bad news and for the first time in my life, I've never been like a, I've never been much of a crier, but anyway, for, for the first time in my life, I was like, I was crying every single night. But that time I just, I hid under the blankets and I just didn't want to talk, talk to anyone. My parents came in and they just started, they started having a go at me for uh, <laughs> not talking to them. Um, and I was like, I just want to be quiet. And they're like, no, you're not like, you're not doing that. So I think it's just sort of like definitely, um, I think definitely like the support system that you have, um, will also determine the, the, like the success, your success from that. But each person is different and you can't, you can't force, force people to come to be better. But luckily for me, I think I just sort of, I, I found, I, I did, I found the things quite early on and I've accepted that this is it quite early on. So that's how I think I've, I've come to terms with, come to terms with it quite quickly. Yeah, that's great to hear. Um, so going back to sort of the dot side of it, um, what are your ambitions sort of moving forward, you know, um, we're saying a little bit beforehand, like saying like you you can understand like the type of doctor you want to be a bit more now. Uh, but what are your ambitions with it, and where do you see yourself sort of moving forwards with it in the future? Well, my ambitions first off is actually just to get through med school. It's yeah. such a lot. It's, it's such a schlep. <laughs> it's uh, five years in med school, five or six years. Um, whether you you can choose to do it an extra research year. Um, and then it's two years as a junior doctor, and then it's however many years to specialize. It could be an extra like nine years to specialize. So overall, it's a it's a long journey, um, and I've I know that I've sort of signed up, signed myself up for it. Um, but yeah, so the, the end goal is to be a doctor, and but I don't want to be I don't want to let my my disability limit what I want, what the area is that I go into. Um, like the a lot of a lot of it is just adapting. Um, and people will say like, oh, well, you probably won't become a surgeon. And, and I was like, well, if I want to be a surgeon, I'll be a surgeon. Um, <laughs> I'll find a way. Um, there's, there's but yeah, so I think in surgeon. terms... Yeah, well, I've exactly. Seen the guy. I've seen, I've seen yeah, the guy exactly, in a yeah. wheelchair doing his operations. It's yeah. possible. Oh, everyone's seen the article, yeah. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, so I think, I think in terms of actually what I, like, what I, what, 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 what I want to do, Actually, the second, like the second week after my accident, because I heard there was a there was a doctor rolling around the hospital that I was at, um, and everyone was like, oh, and I was like, I was talking to the nurses, like, well, I can't be a doctor, and they're like, well, yeah, you can. We have a doctor here who's in a wheelchair, and I think so. She came to visit me. Her name's Jen Warren. She's an anaesthetist, and I think just talking to her, at first, I didn't I didn't like it at all because I saw a woman in a wheelchair, and I was like, no, that's not going to be me. I'm going to be fine. I'll walk out of here. But then I've got to know her a little bit better since then. Um, and actually just, just, uh, I think seeing her has inspired me to, I, I kind of like the idea of doing anesthetics. 
so they're putting people to sleep. So it's still exciting. It's still in the in the the like the, the theatre, but it's not it's not the whole um, cutting people open. So that's cool. And what about the sports side of it? Where where do you sort of want to take that going forwards to? So um, my, my new dream is I can't say I can't say I've always wanted to go to the Paralympics, but because <laughs> I never. <laughs> um, but yeah, my new dream is I, I want to go to the Paralympics and what whichever sport that is, whether it's racing or rowing. Um, that's I've always I have the I'm very much a go big or go home kind of guy. Um, but yeah, so that's that is the dream whenever whenever that might be. Um, but it's it's quite nice. I'm. I'm just i'm quite like a, a physically big guy i'm six foot two when i'm standing um and well, lucky, lucky down as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just sort of grow a bit um but yeah so i'm um i'm quite i'm quite a big guy so luckily that that puts me an advantage especially when everything the upper body it means i've got i've got long arms so whatever sport it is that i end up doing um I want to take that to the highest level, which I can. I, I, I just, yeah. Um, I don't think that's. I don't think that's for everyone. I don't. Think, I can't. I can't say that everyone who takes up sports should aim for that. But for me, that's that's what I want to do. Awesome. Um, and you were saying that you were on the. You were doing stuff with the British rowing team. Um, yeah. So who will you represent then if you were doing that? <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I remember. I remember having a, a, a huge internal conflict. <laughs> Between whether it's whether it be South Africa or uh, or GB, but I mean so far I think I think it'd be a bit of a bit of a kicking kicking the nuts if I uh, if I take all the GB's money and then row for South Africa. So I think it'll have to be it'll have to be GB. I'll just do it begrudgingly. <laughs> I'm I'm sure your uh, parents will have other other suggestions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um. So. I- ask again as well in the chat if anybody's got any more questions uh just pop them in there's been nothing so far which is normally a good sign it means people are just listening and enjoying the show uh but if you guys have got any questions for myself or for Xander, just just pop them in and we'll ask them um and yeah we're we'll asking after this next bit which is i just want to know sort of obviously at the moment we've got a bit of a, a global pandemic happening and um yes. our lives have uh, changed quite a bit i want to know sort of how it's affected you both in terms of what you're doing with the studying and the sport, but also with your personal life as well, like just day to day stuff. So, how's it, how's it affecting you? Um, it's not, it's it's not easy. I think the whole, I don't, I don't think it's easy for everyone. But I think for me, definitely the, especially with it being quite like me having quite a recent injury, um, that whole, it's very fresh and like that whole, this. My first lockdown, as it almost um, was quite recent, so this is actually just a little bit of a walk in the park. Um, <laughs> in terms of, uh, as far as lockdowns go, I can move around, I can do my own thing. Um, so yeah, so actually, um, this hasn't been too bad. The worst part for me is the is the social is the social isolation. Like I'm sitting, like not being able to see my friends. Um, my girlfriend lives in South Africa. So she, I was supposed to go see her um, over Easter, but that didn't happen, um, which sucked. Um, and it's we don't know when we don't know when we're going to see each other again. So that for me, that's the hardest part because I don't know when I'm going to see her again or when I'm going to see the rest of my friends again. Mm. Um, but the, in terms of the other stuff, life just sort of carries on, um, which I've yeah I've. Um, the universities are now uh, online, um, so I'm doing most of my most of my learning. I mean, I missed a lot of lectures anyway when I was at university. So this is kind of having to catch, playing catch up is, is is kind of my kind of my thing. <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so just it's just a lot of online learning, um, and then we do a we do a Zoom call with my uh, racing group every um, every Sunday. I just started at the end of the week. No, yeah, every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, um, and uh, so that's quite. It's quite nice to actually just carry on with the sport. So I've got a roller here, and I'm also training um, three times a week on the rowing machine. So, um, so I'm keeping fit, and I think that's for me. That's uh, it's like I said, like I said before, it's really important. Um, and also, it's yeah, it's the first time, first time in a long time, that I've actually been able to dedicate so much time to my fitness. 
Um, and I, I, kind of, I think this is the best physical shape that I've been in for a long time, if not ever. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so the studies are carrying on as normal. And also, I've, uh, I've also started learning sign language, um, which is quite fun. Uh, me and me and my girlfriend have been doing that. Um, so I, I bought us a, I bought us a, a start course, and it's so it's it's the British sign language. And I, I suggest anyone who anyone who's interested goes to the British Sign Language page um, and you pay as much as you, you pay, pay as much as you want um, and then you, you sign up for a for a I think it's like a 12 week course in sign language and by the end of it you get pretty good so I can I can now sign every kind of animal you could think of <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah no it's it's quite fun and it's for me I think that's another that's another thing like you just sort of as soon as you, as soon as you become disabled, you become a lot more aware of other kind of disabilities um, and uh, other people are, and the struggle that other people have. And I think like the things that you learn, it's quite universal um, across no matter how much, no, no matter what your ability is. Um, so if I can be a doctor and know sign language and be able to be able to talk to one person that wouldn't be able to talk to any of the other doctors, it's, I mean, it's it's one person, like one person's life that I'm impacting that. I wouldn't have that wouldn't have if I hadn't if I hadn't just spent a couple of hours every week learning sign language. So for me, that's it's, that's quite a cool thing to be able to quite quite a cool thing to be able to, to be able to do. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't think I I'm, I'm super glad that. Yeah. I, 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 I don't think. <laughs> I'm sure I could teach. I'm sure I could teach you a thing or two. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to do that at some point. Then. Um, yeah. So um, that's sort of uh, most of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, normally I ask at the end sort of I was asked normally ask for recommendations of anything on um, you know Netflix Amazon you were saying Crip Camp you watched and uh, you're doing British Sign Language is there anything else that you would recommend for people to be doing oh wait hold on one yeah, second before you answer mm -hmm. that um, on Instagram it's coming up to its hour limit so we'll close it back down and pop it back up so uh, uh, okay. um, we'll just come back so we'll come back in a second everyone Sorry about that. That's all right. It's uh this annoying limit thing, but there we go. We'll be back. I said it's an hour limit. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I didn't find find that out until uh, the very first time I did it. I was like, "What's happening? <laughs> it's to <just> stop." <laughs> all right. Yeah, there we go. Request. Oh, your mum was in before you were. Ah. Let's <laughs> <laughs> watch him every move. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right then we'll let those people jump back in uh but if you guys have got any more questions those who are rolling in now just uh pop them in the chat um and then that's pretty much everyone now again okay so yeah we uh asked you about sort of any sort of recommendations you would say for people to be doing while they're at home you know, any netflix books whatever you want to recommend um i yeah so i've been um like i said i've been what i've been uh, yeah netflix is what if i'm i, I think I'm, i have um yeah i have a de attention deficit disorder so i'm str i struggle with not doing something so if i'm either if i'm whenever like when i'm whenever i'm not doing anything i'll be watching something on netflix so i mean modern families just come on netflix communities just come on netflix they're all very they're all very good shows um, but also in terms, but also I, I also get a bit annoyed with myself if I'm not being productive. So um, yeah, so just do what do what you need to do, and then do Netflix, and then I I I, I have like I have a load of books that I want to read, and I have I have them. They look really good on my shelf, but I've never actually read them. Um, but uh, yeah, so there's I mean I, I can't really say that I've been the most. I, I, I really know I don't actually really know what I've been doing with my with myself over the last few weeks um the day is sort of i sort of wake up and then go back to sleep but i'm sure i do things in, in the meanwhile um exercise is, has been the main part um uh, i've also been watching house uh which is which is really cool um yeah awesome thanks margo <laughs> um your mum says she's getting good at instagram <laughs> 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 she also said at the beginning uh who who did the cleaning for the kitchen before the show <laughs> my dad my dad there was a tooth there was a toothbrush here um and they they thought it wouldn't be the best one for my image if i'm holding a toothbrush in the, in the back of the uh background 
It's quite a cool little uh, little place you got there. Anyway, I like the I like the brick wall. It's got quite cool. It is really nice. My my mum did my mum designed all the interior. Yeah. She's she's come to her own in, in that. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, I think that's a pretty good place to uh, wrap up today. Xander, thank you very much for joining. If people are coming over from mine and they want to see more about you, where should they go? Um, so they can go to my my Instagram, which is at six weeks in bed with underscores under all of them. I know I saw someone earlier um, mess, sent a sent a question. I'll just answer it quickly. Oh, yeah. uh, my memories. It was on the other. It was on the other live stream. Oh, yeah, sure. um, she asked about whether patients react differently to me. Oh yeah, sorry, um, I didn't write down. <laughs> I I don't I don't I haven't noticed I haven't spoken to any patients um, actually um, well so I have spoken to a few patients a few it tends to be the older people who don't who they're 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 not they're not very good at so like the just the not the not saying what they're thinking anymore which is good because it's actually like a, for me it's it's important that if people have a question that they want to ask that they ask it and that's why a lot of people love kids because kids will ask questions and the mums the will tell them to go away like they will to like to stop asking to bother the kid the bothering the kid in the wheelchair but i think of, of the few patients that have actually um spoken to me about like what's happened so that like there was i was in a gp once and one of the one of the guy or the, the guy who we were examining he um said to me um like what's wrong what's wrong with you i just told him and he was like oh that's interesting and i think that that's pretty much the extent of it i think they, as long as, because I think the, the, the power of a doctor, um, not a power over a patient, but sort of the, the, the relationship between a doctor and a patient is, um, it's quite a one, it's a one where the patient has to be very vulnerable with you. Um, so, if a patient, so I feel like being vulnerable back with the patient, it allows you to build that rapport, which is quite important. Mm -hmm. So if the patient, has, patient asks me like, what's up, why am I in a wheelchair? I'll let them know. But um, the, actually whether they're reacting different to, differently to me, I've not. No, I've not experienced it because it's something that I think I, sh I just think that they um, it's just something that they have to like they have to look past it because they're there for a reason they can't exactly judge me for being in a wheelchair <laughs> um, so yeah so that's 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 quite a nice thing and I think it was, it was definitely something that I was worried about to start I was terrified that patients wouldn't take me seriously because of my wheelchair um, but it's, it's these little things that like these little anxieties that you have that actually are just really like they, they're not found on any on any like basis like they're just it's just sort of it's just some, something that like for some reason you, you just think it's it's going to happen but it doesn't actually happen so that was one of those yeah yeah my um, friend who I had on one of the early shows Sam she was my spinal physio when I was first yeah. injured and she got injured herself and like she pulled the nerve out of her spine so she was paralyzed oh. down one side um there's a name for it i'm sure you know what it is but um yeah um we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll pretend yeah. that right. <laughs> you haven't got to that module yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah um so with that um she's gone back to work now as a physio and she mm. was saying that uh, majority of the people they actually responded better to it now than they did before yeah. because of like they see that she's gone through it and they feel like, oh, she knows what she's on about because she's going, mm -hmm. she went through a similar situation to me or, and they're like, be, or she's doing the exercises. Now I feel bad. Yeah. That I'm not, <laughs> she's got less ability than I have to do them and I'm yeah. not doing them. So they tend to work harder and respond better to her. So maybe that's something you'll, you'll see yourself in time that people will be like, take you a bit more seriously almost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, oh, you might, you, you know what you're about. <laughs> Especially, especially anybody that uh, comes in who's uh, got any sort of spinal injury or yeah, well, like I think that. just like the rapport that you build, it, there is there is almost some, something like it just I don't know, like I said earlier about vulnerability. If you're both vulnerable with each other, you just sort of build that rapport um, a lot better, and that's that's actually what's important when it comes to telling the patients because you can't tell the patients to do something if you if you don't have any if you don't really care about their lives at all. Yeah, definitely. So. And I get the say. I, obviously, it's completely different. But um, from a personal training perspective, if you like, if you're like open and honest and relatable, mm. you definitely get more out of the clients. From my perspective, yeah, they definitely. And like, they end up working harder, or just yeah. I think it's definitely important, it, no matter what line of work you're in, to be like that. Yeah. Do you find? Do you find? So I've got a question for you now. No, do you okay. find? How have you? How have you found um, working as a personal trainer in a wheelchair? 
Um, so for me personally, like going through the like training side of it was great. I absolutely love that. Mm. The I did it at Bournemouth University, so obviously university campuses are massively accessible, so I had no issues yeah. there. Um, and the people that did the course, uh, I've become good friends with the course leader since then. Um, and he was amazing. He like taught us way more than just like what was on the paper. So yeah. he did like all the business side of it and yeah. teaching us how to set up online stuff. So that was really cool. And then, so since then, um, when I've gone out into the workplace, I, I've done a bit where I've had able-bodied and disabled people and I, the disabled clients are like, every single one of them that's come to me has wanted like more work or more stuff and it's yeah. they've been really responsive but the able side apart from friends i've had that i train that know me i have yeah. already had other clients from that and they've come for the yeah. thing and then they haven't come further so i don't know obviously there's a, there's a, it's like anxieties about it in that um yeah. in terms of like is it because i'm in a wheelchair they don't want to have me yeah. or is it you know that side of it because obviously if i was like this is i can't demonstrate a squat for example to an able-bodied person yeah i get that so they might is it them thinking like oh is you can't do it you know i'm perfectly capable of teaching somebody um i went through all my qualifications and they're happy with it um but yeah is there something like well how is he going to help me you know do these things so yeah there's a there's a part of me that thinks that way but at the, at the end of the day i kind of don't want to train able-bodied people anyway i want to focus on yeah. disabled people so but it doesn't really matter to me as much that, but yeah it can be difficult you know i haven't got the dexterity so if i am training somebody that's not in a wheelchair or even some people in a wheelchair that are paraplegic for example i've got to get them to do like set up the machines and that yeah. kind of thing and i'm just guiding them through it providing the motivation and sort of the expertise so yeah it's definitely different but i love it i still absolutely love doing yeah. it um i like I, do, I i love just imparting my knowledge on other people and um being able to do it online like via youtube and that is an amazing way to do it because i'm there working out with the people so yeah. and they can like relate to me because most of my followers are either in the same situation or very similar um so yeah them doing the workouts with me and they you know they they i think they understand because i'm going i go through the same things i understand and there'll be if you went to somebody with a hasn't been through the same situation we have they wouldn't have the yeah. same knowledge that you can't teach spinal cord injury mm. you have to live it basically yeah so yes yeah, it's, it's definitely really interesting and uh something that i still learn about all the time but yeah um i'm happy about it and it's, it's something i love doing so it's awesome so do you find do you find that you prefer working with the disabled disabled clients anyway yeah for sure um with the able-bodied side of it it's sort of like there's not enough challenge there for me like it's sort of yeah. like well it's really easy to help someone lose weight as long as they're motivated um, yeah but for someone that's in a wheelchair there's like like the so it's a puzzle the, yeah it's like a puzzle it's yeah. like i've got to figure out how to adapt this for your specific di disability whatever it might be yeah um and that's that's the bit i love i love the problem problem solving i love the adapting and it's like figuring out different ways to do it because that's what I do for myself and I that's why I got interested in doing that stuff in yeah. the first place so figuring out for other people is uh just as much fun so yeah but it's quite it's quite interesting because I, I mean when I when I was looking for a personal trainer and when I was at university I, I was struggling because I was trying to find someone who had a background and I ended up just going to someone who didn't have any background in in like disabled training but we found out that really quickly that it actually it's not that big of it that it, it takes some thinking but it's not that huge of a that huge of an adaptation most of the time mm. um which which is it's quite it's weird because sometimes it seems like that barrier is massive and you can't actually get past that barrier of okay well you're in a wheelchair you can't really be in the gym mm. but it's really it's it's, it's so much more of just it's, it's in the mind rather yeah, than sure. than anything um and once you get past that and you actually realize that you're just you're just another human being trying to go to the gym, get fit, get ripped like everyone else. Then, uh, <laughs> then uh, it's, it makes it makes life a lot easier. And I think it's also just yes, it's just quite nice to be able to. Um, I, I don't know about you, but my 
my arms have got my arms have got a lot bigger and that's not just because that's not because i'm going to the gym it's just because i'm pushing myself around everywhere but all my mates all my like friends since my accident they've been like oh yeah you're so ripped <laughs> but <I> was, I, <laughs> that's, that's, that's always zero hard work but now the, now the secret's out so uh, <laughs> let's hope they don't see this <laughs> yeah um james came up in there saying about uh he has a similar issue in being a diving coach both before and after he was paralyzed so yeah similar mm-hmm. sort of thing um i never did any coaching pre-accident i was just purely athlete focused like oh that's sort of what i was doing um but yeah um because yeah. i when I, I went into coaching swimming for a bit and i was coaching able-bodied people there um but I had they they were teenagers that I was mostly coaching and they mm. had like no issues with it in terms of it. Yeah. Probably because they were you know they had like no choices that me being the assistant yeah. coach on Paul's side. It wasn't like they were paying for a specific coach. You know I was the assistant coach there, so that I was just doing it. Um, but they responded really well to me, and I think they once they understood that my I had that big knowledge base, and I understood what I knew I was on about then they were fine about it. It was just, I think that initial sort of overcoming it, like, well, does he know what he's on about? It? Like, oh, he does know what he's on about. <laughs> I'll listen. I get, I get what you mean. Like it's, it's almost as, it's almost as if people, like, I think what people are more scared of is the idea of a disabled person than an actual disabled person itself. Like just, I think once people get to know, like once people get to know us, it's like that saying like, Oh, they'll like me once they get to know me. But it, it is true. Like it's, it's, Actually, like I think, because I because I know, like for me, if I met a person before, or if I had, because I, when I was about to meet my girlfriend, she said like she was she was stressing because she was she was like I don't know I don't know like this is before this is before we were dating, but when she, when we were about to meet for the first time, she was asking like or like she was googling like oh, how to treat disabled people or like <laughs> like trying to see how to uh, she, like and then once you once you get to know it like once you like meet her for so the first time you see it, it's just an old person who's sitting down yeah. and can't move their legs um it's not there's nothing else um and uh yeah so it's quite interesting to see um see how people react like because you you sort of expect people to react one way and then and then after a while they just they don't react that way anymore and you just sort of you get to know them and actually become like you just you're just another person to them which means you're not special anymore which is sad (laughs) uh yeah um yeah my girlfriend seems to think that me being disabled is an awesome thing She's like, I get, yeah, I, it is. I get to, it's, uh, not perks. it's like, I, I have a seat wherever I go. I uh, get yeah. to skip the queues. We get to park in really good spaces. Um, we get fr- like a care or go free to like everywhere we go. So it's, it's the dream, honestly. <laughs> I go, like, and I, I feel like I don't deserve it half of the time because half of the time I just, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to say that we don't need it because they might take it away from us. But <laughs> like, half, like it's just it, like there's a, so much actually, and that's for me. Like the the focusing on the public positives is a lot has been a huge part of this, just because like the parking and like the, the the tickets and stuff. Like if you focus on that uh, rather than what you haven't got, it makes life so much it makes life so much easier. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, yeah, like it's just it's just pretty cool actually being able to park wherever you want for free. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I've. I've actually I've paid I think I've paid the same amount for parking since since my accident because I've got like two tickets since since then and uh, like it's like a hundred like hundred pounds each so I might as well have just paid but <laughs> I'll have to teach you off air how to get out of them I've got no, I'll, 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 uh, I'll call you after this <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the, private information there's, there's, there's ways and means in getting out of that I I think uh, I've had about six parking tickets and never paid a one one of them so. Uh, <laughs> teach me always <laughs> um, yeah um, yeah because yeah, I, I never went to like the theater before my accident yeah. and i go all the time now because alice wants to go and she goes half price basically if she goes with me because yeah. she pays for half of one ticket and i pay for the other half but it's great and it's amazing for dates because you, you take them you take them to fancy places and then but we don't tell them actually it's a half price so. yeah. <laughs> i really shouldn't be saying this so loudly in such a public forum because i'm going to get told off after this <laughs> that's all right so they just wish they had us <laughs> yeah exactly um the, the other thing as well um i posted a picture of it like a while ago but when we go to like a festival that alice stands on, on my wheels and like, holds my shoulders so she's up above the crowd without me having to do oh, any work awesome, whatsoever yeah. so <laughs> That's oh, cool. we haven't we haven't figured that one out yet. I have uh, to I have to go search for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you some pictures over. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. Um, well, you, you asked me a question. Was there anything else you wanted to know while you were here? Or? 
Um, yeah, like how have you found the adapting your own? Because I think the main thing for me with that with the exercises is when you're lifting stuff above your weight. If, actually, there's more of a specific question for wheelchair users, but I feel like people. But when you're lifting stuff above your head, you know that tilt that you get when you're like your wheelchair tilt, wheelchair, wheelchair tips back. How do you how do you counteract that? So if I'm doing it lightweight, for example, yeah. I can sort of deal with that. I can sort of balance enough that I'm not going to tip backwards. Um, yeah. I've personally set my chair up so it's not too tippy uh, okay. for the purpose of exercising that it's not going to be as bad, you know, or um, I've got strong enough grip where I can do sort of a, a backward balance quite easy. So I can get over curves and all that that I need to in my day-to-day life. Mm. Um, I just have to like sort of stop and think about it uh, because for me yeah. personally, it's actually more important to be safer in the gym. But yeah. apart from that, it, the other things I do is just literally push my wheelchair up against something, like back up against it and just work yeah. from there. So uh, whether that's like a bench in the gym, like the gym benches are the perfect height just to wedge in the back of your chair and you're not going to tip backwards. Um, yeah. Or like one of those jump boxes or just push yourself against a wall. Um, and then from there, you're not going to tip backwards as easily. Um, so that definitely, definitely helps. Um, there's other things like... If I was doing like a game machine and I'm doing like a chest press, obviously if I press, I'm just going to tip backwards. So yeah, yeah. In that situation, I would either, yeah, again, wedge a bench behind me or every single time I go to the gym, Alice comes with me anyway. So she, she just yeah, sort of exactly. hold it and sort of not tip. Uh, I wouldn't tip back. So for me, like that's the quick solution. But if it was like a, if I was by myself, then I'd just uh, move a bench behind me and just sort of do that. So, yeah, it's just small things like that. And I, I love going to the gym and, like, finding a new piece of equipment and going, like, ooh, what can I do with this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was like, they, were, they had a new sort of hip thrust machine because, obviously, everybody wants to build a good bum now. And I, yeah, I was, yeah, like, yeah. staring at it for an hour, like, how, what can I do with this? Because it's not designed for me whatsoever, but it's like, <laughs> I could probably do some shrugs with this instead and just shrug it up <laughs> in one side. So it's just, like, it's not what it's used for, but uh, it might be better than the, the other machine that's actually the exercise I want to do on it is designed for because yeah. it's not designed for a wheelchair user. So yeah. it's fun. It's fun going in and experimenting. So yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. I love doing it. <laughs> and what's your, what's your aim for your, cause I know you have your Instagram page and also your, your career and personal training. What's your aim for like the next, for the future, like for next five, next five years, let's say what's your five year plan? Yeah. So I yeah. want to have it where like, when I started it, there was nobody on YouTube, nobody anywhere doing online fitness for wheelchair users. Um, there's a few people like started around the world that were doing it like in their own gym space and all that, but there was nobody doing in that. And I want to sort of be like the person, like if you Googled wheelchair fitness online, I'm, I'm the person you find and I'm giving out all the knowledge. And from there, it's, I'm sort of slowly expanding all the time. So the online stuff with YouTube, that's pretty much set. I'm just keep rolling that and I'm pretty comfortable with that. Moving forwards, obviously, I want to make a career out of it. I don't want to, you know, YouTube only pays so much. It's not a huge amount of money. And I'm not getting PewDiePie views. So, uh, yeah. you know, I'm not going to get a huge from there. So I need to find ways to monetize it, um, but in a small way. So that's what I've been learning over the, sort of the last three years and how to do that. Uh, and yeah. One of the things I want to do is set up like an online training program but that's affordable because obviously being in a wheelchair is, is expensive, you know? Yeah, and, definitely. <laughs> and I want it to be as accessible as many people as possible, but obviously I need to be paid for my time as well. Yeah. So it's quite like, that's the aim I was, which I was meant to be doing before lockdown, but then I reverted yeah. back, I reverted to just doing all these live streams because I felt like that was more important at the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, having a program set up where people can come, um, and get all the information and the knowledge they need in the training programs, um, and they can have like they can lead a healthier, fitter life. So, yeah, having a website where it's got a program where they can come and they sign up to a subscription service and they just get all the information they need, like, and yeah, go from there. Uh, and then long, long term, I would like to have my own gym where it's like YouTube Studio slash uh, gym, and it's all accessible yeah. for wheelchair users and um yeah but integrated sorry say that again but an integrate an integrated gym so integrated body uh, able-bodied yeah yeah so anybody and, can come. Yeah. Uh, but i'd like to have it like there's sort of like an airbnb attached to it maybe that uh, yeah people can come and they can like have like a camp for example they can come yeah. for two weeks and i can like show them everything they need to do to be able to live there might feel more independent that'd be really cool yeah because yeah. like say like when you came out of hospital you were like 
what do I do? You know, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's like, well, they come to me for two weeks and I help you <clears> in the gym, but then at the same time, we can learn some other Set stuff. Set you up. Yeah, <laughs> so you can like integrate into your normal life and it'll have like stuff in the house, for example, that would be accessible and like you could take tips and that and take it into your own life and sort of have a place where you can go, oh, this is what's possible. And then when I get yeah. home, you can sort of start integrating it. So that transition period is a lot easier. So, Cause that, that is a difficult part. <laughs> no, I had like the same sort of idea ish. Um, I wanted to start a, uh, like a video channel as well for more of like a, a documenting about how this is the way that I've adapted the different medical aspects of everything. Um, so because of me, I think, I think there's a, there's a new wave of, um, medical students and doctors that with with disabilities, um, and I think actually the the um, the things that they could, like the value that they can add to the medical healthcare system wherever it is in the world um, is invaluable with the patient care um, and the rapport that you just don't like you you just don't get with, like with uh, with normal people I guess, <laughs> um, but but there is also then the the added challenge of um, how do you train and how do you actually be a doctor and how do you offer good quality patient care um, so I, I wanted to start an Instagram well I, I still have plan, plans for it but to start a, a video channel uh, where I show, where I to teach and to teach how I adapt that um, and actually also um, but as, a, as, more, as more of a learning um, platform for universities as well because um, I know speaking to some some people, they've they've also been like shying away from universities because they've been in wheelchairs, especially for medicine. Um, whereas I had a foot in, um, and they were trying to close they were trying to close the door on my foot, but I couldn't feel it, so I didn't take it away. Um, <laughs> but um, no, so I think I think actually just I think for me, I want to I want to start a more of a an inclusivity for um, the medical profession and disabled doctors. I think it's because I think it's quite an important, a, a quite important place to get um, full representation of all um, of all minorities, no matter what they are. Definitely, yeah. Well, if you need any help with that, you just uh, let me know. I'll, I'll show you how to set up all the YouTube side of it. <laughs> Perfect. You can edit my videos as well. Oh no, that's the, that's my worst. That's the worst. Part <laughs> I hate doing that myself. That's, that's like somebody I want to employ as an editor to do all my editing for ah. me. So. Oh, well, we can share it. We can share an editor. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so, uh, something you were saying there about accessibility. That's another thing I want to start. I've started to do and was had my foot in the door to try and start it was to start to change gyms and like on a like a nationwide scale in terms yeah. of changing their attitude towards uh, accessibility for wheelchair users Definitely, and having yeah. it so that a gym like any wheelchair goes to any wheelchair user goes to any gym in the country and has no issues that, that's why i would love to get to a point and it's got the equipment there that's ready and it doesn't yeah. have to be super specific equipment for example i asked my gym to get a ski erg because it would be yeah. great for me got it and every single pt uses it for their clients warm up now so it's been fantastic yeah, they're killer though <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just like Simple stuff like that makes it more accessible. But like having the doors open, having the changing facilities, the toilets, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, because it's it's not a thing that gyms were originally designed for. Because yeah. <laughs> you get to a lot of them, and you're like, oh, it's it's upstairs. <laughs> um, or you know, like my gym, for example, doesn't have an automatic door. That's the only thing that yeah. it's like. So yeah. it's like literally like, straight away, there's a barrier to get in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a <literal> barrier. <laughs> um, luckily. I always go with someone, so that's not too much of an issue because the rest of the gym is absolutely fine. But, but yeah, if you were going and you were trying to go yourself, you might be put off straight away by not being able to get yeah. So stuff like that I just, I'm working with. So, uh, yeah, trying to work with fitness first at the moment is uh, my challenge. But obviously now it's locked down. It's, uh, yeah. it, it's a bit on hold. I think it's important. I mean, it changes. It, it's, it's, you can always you can sit back and you can like, accept that you can like, leave it for someone else to... Sorry, I'm just, my friend, my friend Ferg is trying to wave. I'm just, Hi, Ferg. You can stop. You can stop now. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, for me, I think I think it, it all changes with one person, and it always takes one person to just do to just to, to be that person that causes the change. Um, and it's so so easy sometimes to just sit back and say, "Ah, oh, someone else will do it." Hmm. But 
they won't because you're the you're the person you're the person who needs to do it and i think that's pretty important um and i think i think for me the, the idea that i could be the one i could be the one to inspire people to actually um to go out and be and uh, pursue a career and something that they might not have thought of doing before or like with you um talking to the gyms like it's not it's, it's not your job but actually it's something that that uh, that's important for you and it's important for a lot of people and you can leave it you can leave it to just happen or you can actually go out and make make a change yourself which is good yeah definitely yeah it, uh, that's why I was for like if I come out with an idea just just go with it like I am yeah um doing that led me to this point so uh and I'm pretty happy yeah. where I am so. doing something right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely uh and yeah I'm, I'm I'm absolutely loving it and uh, I'm sure if you went down that route as well it, it would lead you to some pretty interesting places that yeah. Never know. Like, I started just doing exercise videos, and the bit I love about it the most is doing the interviews, which is really weird. Like, no, yeah. It's just like I never even thought about doing interviews to start with. It's quite nerve wracking at the start, I must tell you. <laughs> yeah, you. Like, you just sort of you get this knot, and you're like, okay, well, but it goes away after like two minutes. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I still get a little bit um, when I go into it, just sort of like, is it going to go all right? We'll make sure the audio levels are all okay, and. <laughs> yeah, like I've just set it up. Um, you'll see it afterwards. It's got like a fancy screen. I've been since lockdown. I've got a bit more time on my hands, so I can. Um, I've been making my channel look a little bit more fancy. So uh, it's quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> Love that side. Of it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's good though. It's nice. To, it's nice to be able to just talk to people like a real conversation, one on one. Um, yeah, definitely. You have those sort of because. A lot of it in the media that I see, um, for example, like the first time I knew about you, I read the Metro magazine on the way yeah. up to watch Six Nations, talk about rugby. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, was, I was on the way up to London and uh, I read about you in the magazine, but nearly all the time it's either like, oh, terrible story and you get a yeah, short no, bit. Never, never be able to walk again. Yeah. Horrible, horrible. And it's got like <laughs> clip bits, like clip bits of just like quotes about the person. And then the other side of it is like, Oh, it's a miracle and that side of it, and it's just like there's no like real story, like the actual yeah. stuff that's like, oh, that's the actual interesting stuff, like hearing about yeah. what people are doing, how they're adapting to their life, and for me personally, that's what I'm. I don't uh, care about like whether they're a miracle or <laughs> whether they're yeah. not. It's just like, I want to know about <laughs> the person. I want to know what they're doing yeah. and like the awesome things. So yeah, it's great to do, that's and that's why I love doing these interview things because it's like delving into it a little bit deeper i mean we've been going for like an hour and a half now um yeah and it's like yeah you just learn a lot more and i think it gives a lot more context to the situation as well and like you were saying there about um having people like they're more scared of the uh disability that like in, until they know the person yeah and like doing this yeah. sort of breaks if somebody's watching and they're not disabled it can break the stigma a little bit of Oh, we're people too. We're not just yeah. something that's well, kind of see our wheelchairs. No, exactly. Like, we're just, <laughs> just two, two talking faces. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, we're just two two it's regular. It's kind of boring, lives. actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, it's been great talking to you. Anyway, thank you so much for coming yeah. on the show. Um, yeah, I, I'm glad to have you on. <laughs> Peace out. Awesome. Uh, again, people, if you want to know where you are, it's six underscore weeks underscore in underscore bed. That's right. Yep. All right. It's making more catchy than that. <laughs> uh, it's up on the YouTube channel. Um, it's up on the screen underneath your name, which is super fancy. <laughs> so, uh, it's a pleasure, Lauren. Um, so, yeah, thank you, everybody, for joining in. Thanks for asking your questions and all that kind of thing. If you guys are coming from Xander's page, you want to know who I am. My name's Ben. I'm a quadriplegic personal trainer here in the UK. I do fitness videos for disabled people, so uh, come and join me wherever I am. Every single social media page, Adapt to Perform. Uh, so come and, come and check out my stuff if you want to do that. But um, I go live with these kind of chats every, every single day, apart from Monday and Thursday, so there will be no tomorrow. And also I go live with fitness every single day. So every day at 5 p.m. British summertime, I'm going live with fitness. And then every day, apart from Monday and Thursday, I go live with a chat. Uh, who have I got on Friday? Let's have a look. My uh, Oh, I've got Sophie Grace, who is a personal trainer who has cystic fibrosis. Um, and she's pretty awesome. And she's coming on. Oh, and also, because oh, I stupidly double booked, I've got somebody from New Zealand after that. So I'm going to be on there for like 
a good three, four hours, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't see me on the weekend, you know what? <laughs> I'm just sleeping. So. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. All right, thanks, Ben. All right, see you guys.